what we're going to do today and what we're going to go through um, over the next hour is uh, we're really going to talk about risk management and we're going to do it um, based on an approach of giving you some background on some things that uh, you know computer aid has gone through uh, that uh, I'm sure most of you if not all of you can relate to uh, you know, relative to uh, running uh, engagements and, and projects and application development projects. Um, so we're going to give you some background on, on that, um, tell you how we uh, came about the uh, risk management solution that we have in place today, give you some you know, background and some uh, a look at how it works and what it does um, and how it, may, uh, how it may work for you. Uh, we're going to talk about risk management. I'm going to try and do, uh, you know, kind of simply lay it out. Um, we're going to then talk about, again, today's objective and what I'm you know, going to try and present in the slides after that. Talk about the road less traveled, uh, which is really our way of uh, uh, getting to risk management, our solutions, and some, and some final thoughts. So let's so let's at least define the uh, you know the uh, you know the problem. The concept of risk is inherent in every project. Uh, <clears throat> so let's let's start off uh, pretty quickly and just say uh, up front, um, I'm not going to talk about eliminating all risks on all projects. Uh, that's not possible. Um, and, in fact, there are good risks and bad risks. Um, you know, for each project, you all have to decide, you know, which, which ones you have. Um, taking risks on projects are important. Um, it's impossible to avoid. Um, <clears throat> what risk management is really all about is identification of the risk, analysis of the exposure to the risk in, a de in, in the uh, development or project uh, effort, and execution of some kind of plan to mitigate that risk or address it early on. And so that's really what risk management is all about. So let me do this by simply asking you know, a series of questions. Have you ever been surprised by something of significance in your, uh, in your business uh, or in, you know, on a project? Um, <clears throat> have you ever been told a project or activity was okay uh, only to find out uh, later you know, otherwise? Um, that, that's never happened uh, before in IT, um, but of course if you read the computer world, um, of course, it's happened on a regular basis. Um, <clears throat> are you at all unsure as to whether your organization is doing what you directed or what you want them to do? Uh, or your project team, for that matter, if you're a project manager or a team, a team leader. Um, are you really unsure as to whether they're doing the right thing and doing things right? Do you feel like you're being forced to make key decisions with missing data or information? You know, key decisions about how to mitigate some risk or identify some risk or work on a you know component of the project without all of the you know the facts in front of you. And do you believe that you have at your fingertips the most important data and opinions, and, and that's an important you know component of this about important activities and efforts. Um, sometimes all of the data uh, that we have uh, does does not really complete the picture, and sometimes it's about opinions. Uh, as well, and, and different points of view. If you've answered yes to any of these, and I'm sure at least some of them, uh, you're in good company uh, with a whole lot of companies in the in the U.S. or you know that are engaged in IT, but for really all of the wrong reasons. You see, what we learned um, <clears throat> is that greater than 50% of all IT projects have either failed or were delivered with less than desired results. Um, industry information, you know, Standish Group uh, study that was done. Now we can believe all of the, you know, the information in, in the, in the, you know, that, this uh, slide or not. We can look at Standish and say, oh, yeah, I don't believe it's 50 percent. What number is it? 25 percent? Is it 30 percent? Is it 15 percent? If you're in that 15 percent number, whatever the number really is, it's never good. Um, and 15% of all of the IT projects is still a big number. Uh, <clears throat> and they delivered with less than desired results. That means they didn't actually fail, but a large number of them did. Um, but a large number of them were delivered with less than the desired functionality that uh, the project had, uh, charter had started off with. So here's today's objective, and this is <clears throat> where we're headed. We want to introduce you, and I do, to a new tool set, process, because it is a set of processes, and capabilities that provides you with the opportunity, and it does us, um, you know, to become proactive and quantitative in project risk management. 
um, get more insight into how the project is running and what are the things that could potentially derail it before they derail it. <clears throat> so let me tell you about our road to risk management and how we got there. Now, we didn't wake up one day and say, wow, this would be a really good idea if we created a risk management uh, product. <clears throat> of course, that would have been you know, a great story, but not how we came about it. What we did is over the past 20 years of project experience as a you know, process and metrics company, um, you cannot meet somebody in the management team at, at Computer Aid without them you know, talking about metrics and process. Uh, we did our first fixed price development project, uh, delivered it in 83. So we've been in fixed price application development for quite a while. Uh, that's risky. Need a process, methodology, and a, and a set of tools uh, to be able to do that. We delivered our first million dollar fixed price development project uh, in 1986. Now, over the past you know, 10, 15, 20 years, we've done a lot of projects, over 350 new application de you know, development projects, deployed over 50 managed maintenance teams, which is um, legacy applications maintenance support teams, and completed you know, millions of hours of billable time doing you know, you know, T&M kinds of uh, application development projects as well. So you know, behind this organization and behind us is a lot of time spent in the project management arena. <clears throat> Here's what we learned um, during that uh, the 20 some years. Uh, that, that the absence of good data is managing in the fog. <clears throat> If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And so it, for us, it was all about measuring things and getting the metrics. Discerning the truth can be difficult. Not suggesting that people are lying, but I am suggesting that people may not be telling the entire truth or the entire story based on what they believe you need to know. Plans are just plans. They're just pieces of paper with words on them. Uh, managing them, and I've, and I've worked on it, watched a number of people and worked on a number of projects. You know, the plans are done, they're stuck on a shelf, and you know, you continue down your merry way, and you look at it every, every now and then, and every few weeks, and say, yeah, you know, I, I think we're okay. Uh, <clears throat> Bob Charette said uh, in, a, in a seminar that I was doing with him once, mistakes are things that happen once, blunders are repeated mistakes. So we learned very quickly that we needed to avoid blunders. We also know that projects are made, we learned that projects are made up of three things. Things we know, things we assume, because uh, everybody makes assumptions on projects, and things we think we know. Things uh, <clears throat> we know, you know, the technology be used, the expected start date, the expected delivery date, the business rules that will be followed, you know, those kinds of things, tools, best practices. Things we think we know is the expected start date. Yeah, see, we thought we knew it over here, and things we had in our list of things we know. This project is going to start on January 5th. And the reality is that sometimes it doesn't start until February 5th, maybe March 5th, um, depending on what needs to happen prior to that project actually starting up. <clears throat> what we didn't know that we started to take for granted key components of the project management and our methodology. Over 20 years of doing this, we start, started to take for granted things that we were doing on a day-to-day you know, basis. We, we not only grew up as an organization, <clears throat> which is easy because a lot of people are in the same general geography and it's easy to communicate, we also grew out. Um, grew into other states, other countries, you know, started, you know, really spreading out as an organization. And so <clears throat> we just assumed that things were happening and we were starting to take for granted the things that we were doing on a day-to-day -day basis. We also didn't know that all of the data that we, were, uh, that we were looking at, the things that we were measuring success on, may not be accurate. 